Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Swaggle Haas Talks to Dealers video. We are at Los Angeles Comic Con and I wanted to take the time at the show to ask these comic experts if they felt like comic books are in fact recession proof. As we head into 2023 with the uncertainty in the economic market, I thought getting their insights would be really helpful information for us to hear. So I hope you guys like this podcast style video. Obviously, it's a little bit on the long side. So just grab some bags and boards, sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation. All right, well, I'm with Lawrence from PDOTS Comics. Lawrence, What's good up, to see guys? you again. You know, how's the show been so far? It's been a pretty good show. You know, the LA market is uh, a great crowd. It turn, they come out, they turn out. So it's been a good show, a lot of sales, a lot yeah. of sales. Well, I've been going around the show and kind of talking to dealers. I always like to kind of hear, you know, the stories and what you guys right. are sort of feeling. Obviously, this current market, kind of where we are globally, economic right. kind of recession, a lot of comic book prices pulling back, right. even more so than that of, say, three months ago and four okay. months ago. What's your feeling as on the state of the market? What's your feeling on buyer's habits right now? My feeling is that it's a total buyer's market right now. Yeah. Um, if you can get in now, well, first, if you have dispensable income. Yes. <laughs> that's first and foremost. Don't overspend. Yeah. Uh, fiscally responsible spending. I always preach to all my customers. But if you do have any sort of disposable income and you can get in on uh, blue chip keys, even mid-level books, now's the time to start buying because they're at the bottom prices that I think it'll be for the next six or six, six to nine months. Right. I think towards spring, summer of 2023, I think you're gonna start to see more stabilization right. to the economy and then probably uh, prices for certain books start to either increase a little bit or you know, hit the moon for certain books depending right. on what's happening in Hollywood and film. Right, do you feel like even for your own habits, obviously as a dealer you have to buy as well. Right. Are you sort of being more choosy right now or are you just sort of like, if it's a good opportunity, you're gonna buy it? If it's a good opportunity, I'm gonna buy it. Okay. Um, you have to remember the month it is, as of the day of this filming, it's December. Right, right. People need holiday cash. So right. you do have a weird situation where you have this economy that's kind of in a lull and then you have the holidays where people need holiday cash. So what's happening is this kind of double effect of people selling a lot of collections right. because of either uh, a financial situation they may be in that they're needing uh, a buffer for right. the six to eight months of cash or because of the holidays, right. they need cash for the holidays. Right. And so at our shop, we've seen an influx of collections come in for one of those two reasons and it's a complete buyer's market. Uh, right, I see, I see. Now, are you, so I asked you a little bit you know, off camera, but I'll ask again, uh, were you selling in 2008 and 2009? And kind of where I'm going with this is right. like, you know, sometimes I hear the adage thrown around that comic books are recession proof. Right. And I think maybe that's true for certain <laughs> ones, but if you were around that time when we were like officially in the recession after okay. the housing crash and all that stuff, do you have recollection of what it was like in that time period? I and do. like, what was your feeling of comic books then? Did they get destroyed or <laughs> what's your feeling? Well, it's, it's, it's similar but different. Okay. And so it, it is similar in the fact that the economy was in a lull, but for different reasons. Yeah. You know, the 2008 market was the bubble of the housing market. A lot of people were borrowing money and uh, spending beyond means. And then it had to implode at some point. Right. And so a lot of assets came to market in 2008, 2009 right. because people needed to cash out. You know, they had no other options. They had debt that needed to be repaid. And so a lot of tangible assets had to be sold to cash in. This is different. This is, you know, there's not necessarily a bubble in the sense of housing, but you have a lot of crypto money right. that now has collapsed. Yeah, yeah. You have, um, uh, it's not debt necessarily. It's more uncertainty. It's uncertainty. Right. Right. And so it's, you're coming up into, all, uh, we just got out of the midterm elections. Yeah. So that hesitancy about what's gonna happen with government, you have a war potentially. Right, right. So it's a, it's a lull, but for different reasons. Right. But anytime you have economic uncertainty, people like to have cash on hand. Of course, of course. And so my thought is in relation to comics, it's still buyer's market. Right. You know, a lot of assets came to market, flood supply, but you still have demand. If you have cash available, you can use it and flex that power. Right. So I, I say it's, it's different. Now, not all comics are recession proof. Right. <laughs> not them all. Right. Not all of them. But they're standard blue chip keys. You guys know them. Hulk 181s, AF 15s, Spidey 1s. 
basically pre-1970s books, they're always gonna retain value. They might stabilize and have a, a new bottom, but the upward trajectory over a long-term period is always gonna increase. Right, right. Well, let me ask this, asking for a friend here. Okay. What, if, <laughs> what if I went a little crazy sure. in April of 2021 and I bought 20 Eternal Ones 9.8? Okay. Okay. What would you say to me right now? What should I do? Don't it, panic. Okay, don't I, panic. I say don't panic because it, we fall into a habit when we start to overanalyze things and look at time periods in a short-term perspective. Mm. And so if you're looking at April 2021, okay, you had the movie, it was at an all-time high for that book. And now if you compare that to a year, year and a half out, yeah, it's not worth what it was April 2021. Right. But long term, right? If we look at a 10 year period, no one cared about Eternals 1 before any sort of movie announcement. Right. So you're still possibly winning in the long term if you bought in prior to the movie announcement. Yeah, of course. But if you bought at the all time high, you might take a hit. Yeah. But don't panic because maybe in 10 years, that 1970s book will be 60, 70 years awesome. old yeah. and it might reinvigorate some interest. You may not get all your money back, quote unquote money right. back, but you might recoup some of those paper losses right, if, right. if you're able to hold on and not panic and resurgency happens in the market again. Yeah, so your, your feeling is like if you can hold, right. probably is the way to go for certain key books. For so maybe maybe you books. overspend. Right, right. So don't panic. You know, there's some books that probably won't rebound. Yeah, yeah. Um, we won't talk about those. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, another yeah. video. They will be forgotten forever. They will be gotten forever. But older books, Bronze Age books, Eternals 1 is a good one. Um, a lot of Copper Age books, some of those Spidey Keys that were on all-time highs. Even, I know uh, Spidey 361 is not a copper book. Modern, I call it Chrome Age. But Chrome, like uh, if... If you got in at the right time, even at an all-time high, there's still positives to be had about certain key books. If they're first appearances, uh, popular artists, popular characters, there's time for rebounding if you don't panic and are willing to play the long-term game. Right, right. Well, Lawrence, thank you for your insight. No really problem. appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of the show, man. Anytime. All right. I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, Arr. Brad Sloan from FEF Comics. Good to see you again. Hi, everybody. Well, Brad, here we are, LA Comic Con 2022. It's wouldn't, back. Wouldn't be a comic show unless I got a chance to talk to you. And, it uh, never is. You know, I like, to, I like to pick your brain. I like to pick your brain. Ouch. You know, here we are in December. And I would say recently, even more so than when I maybe last spoke to you at San Diego or so, so we've seen some pullbacks and some prices. Yeah. How are you feeling about... Did I predict that, people, that you still have to get your price, talk it down, yeah. don't be afraid? What that did is made everybody afraid. Oh, am I buying at the height? You still have to realize it's going to change. When prices fall, people don't want to unload because they don't want to lose money. But new comics of that variety start getting priced at the normal rate at right. what the rate is. So that slowly starts increasing it again because as they price them new material from old collections, people get to buy at the right price and then they trickle back up. Right, right. So what's your what's your feeling, I guess, sort of right now, sort of in this month, going into 2023? Like, what do you think 2023 is going to look like from a comic show? You think it's buyer's market? Should I be going ham at this show right now? Should I empty my wallet? Should I wait two months? What's your sense? Even as someone of you, I mean, you, you still buy stuff too. Are you aggressively yeah, buying or how are you feeling? Well, I, you know, I still collect, but so specific. I mean, I'm uh, golden age robots. I just got my grail with startling 49. I want a uh, fantastic three, right? You know, I mean, those books like I collect, will always be grail and grail prices. They will never go down. They're gonna be 10 times what you wanna pay for them. But if you don't get it, you missed the boat. Right. Now, what do I see right now? Cheap stuff is flying. So those guys with the dollar boxes, everybody's looking for a deal like a 20 or $30 comic in the dollar box, some mistakes. Also, what people are buying is piles 
of bronze and they're getting them at good prices because again if something you really wanted just went out of your budget you still want comics right you're gonna go get them right I am I, this show was slow Friday but yesterday was off the hook with my half off boxes just piles and so when normally if I might do a short pile at $30 uh, and then give it for 15 guys were pulling piles of 800 and I'm giving them to them for like 350 right and 350 out of the half off boxes is pure bread and butter right so what they're gonna do is buy the books that are good deals right I can't tell you how many people came up to me asking for that X-Men 266 up there and I have it at 320 I'll sell it for 280 but I was hoping that people would say well would you take we'll meet halfway right because 280 is a great price on a high-grade 266 I mean they go for like 350 400 and 30 people have asked me right now that should have sold already now it's not rare but people are thinking is that a high price is it a 2020 price I don't want to pay 2020 prices I think there are some people as prices come down that might sometimes have that fear of like oh if I buy it now in three months is it gonna be 20% less uh, in your experience like how do you how do you operate in that world as we kind of maybe go into this kind of bear market whatever you call it like, what, what, what is your thought process or how do you navigate that what's your feeling well I mean again you can be your own worst enemy if you have a budget and you have to stick to it, then stick to it. Yeah. If something frightens you, then then walk away. I mean, I always say, don't make it hurt. Right. But I always say, I only regret the comics I never bought. Mm. When I was 12, I saw Captain America 1 for $105. Now that could buy a Mustang back in 1968. I was offered that same book in 1990. The guy said, wait, 105, I bought that book in Hollywood. I got that. I have it. Do you want it? 20 grand. And I had the money and I didn't buy it. It's probably worth a half a million today. Yeah. How do you navigate the idea of possibly having a half a million? Buy comics. But you don't and worry wait. about it. You don't lose, you don't lose and any wait. sleep over that. Yeah. No, you can't. I mean, yeah. I sold things, you know, AF-15, I sold for 600 bucks back in 2000. I mean, I, you can't lose sleep. You can't make it hurt. This is your passion. Passion pays. Eventually, it's going to pay. If you're young, save them. If you're old, flip them. I don't know. It's your call. Do it, though. But don't if you walk away. Just ask for a discount, right? right? I mean, ask for it. And at a certain point, if you want it, you're just going to have to jump in. Yes. You're just going to have to. Otherwise, what you'll be tra tossing and turning, what will you be doing? I mean, you'll be going, what am I doing? It's like you are not, you don't have direction. Right. And I'm not calling anybody undirectional. But there's one direction into getting comics, and that is shelling out the money. Right. People, hey, how did you get these comics in like nine years? They're all paid for now. In nine years, all my inventory is paid for. It's because I started spending 20,000, 30,000 in collections. I tell people how to do that. Uh, they don't have to buy one at retail. They can buy 100, keep one, and sell the rest. Uh, if you're a hustler, you're going to do good in comics. Right, right. Now, sometimes people throw out the adage uh, comic books are recession proof. Back in like 2008, 2009, you know, we had that kind of housing market bubble crash. I don't know if you were dealing at that time, but even in your experience, what was your sort of recollection? Or even, it doesn't have to be that time, in other, say, economic tough times that we've been in. What do you think about that adage, that statement, or, or well, you know? Well, you know, what, what is recession proof? What is a recession? It's, it's um, high interest rates, uh, uh, things that uh, people overextended themselves. How do you overextend in comics? Uh, do you take a loan? Not usually. But if you did, then a comic is not recession proof because you're paying high interest rates right. on something that isn't going up in that rate. Right. The recession 
make people concentrate on where their money needs to go. I was lucky. I had a collection I bought in the 80s. They're recession proof because my 50 cent comic from the 80s is now $50,000. That's how you do it. The idea is don't extend yourself, don't take loans, don't do what, don't make a comic book be a mortgage. Right. Just get in, cash will get you the best deal, cash will then, if you need the money, you'll be able to sell it. If you have equity, just like a house, you're recession proof. Right. But the people that were recession proof in the housing market bought before the recession. Right. It's simple. Right. Don't overextend. Well, going into 2023, what do you think that that, that year, this year or coming year is going to feel like? Just buyer's market? Just go all in, find that AF-15 swaggle house that you, you know, might have never thought that you could have afforded? Absolutely. Um, um, you know, again, all in should be both directions. Uh, realize this market is all in sales, all in buys. Uh, people are still making money short term. Right. It's just where do you find them? Right. If you're going to go to the wall and pay 10% less in retail, you're not going to be doing quick flip around. Right. If you go hustling on the street and find a collection, Hey, listen, I tell everybody, be my agent. You find me a $100,000 collection at what I want to pay hundred grand. i will give you $5,000 in cash. You can have your pick. How about buy what you want and be a partner? How about let's put them on the wall? There is a way if you hustle, ask everybody you meet. Right. Hey, nice talking to you. Do you have any old comic books? <laughs> do you have any old comic books? I do. Okay. Well... Pulse pounding piles of comics. Well, I'm gonna to talk to Brad after I cut off the camera, but Brad, as always, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, thank you, you know, Swagalos. Buy what you like, I guess, right? He's got it going on. All right, well, I'm with James from Robot Monster Island, and James, you know, here we're here at LA Comic Con. We're going around the show. I always like to do the thing where I like I talk to a lot of the dealers, get their sense of the market. Here we are in December, 2022. And I, I would say that, you know, it feels like the last couple of months have definitely been seeing pullbacks in prices, corrections in prices, especially compared to earlier in the year. What's your general sense as someone who deals in comics quite a bit, you've been doing this for a long time, what are your feeling on this current time in the market? I think that the reason that, like we were talking about before, a lot of people have this panic, like the sky is falling, is because the only real reliable data that we have when people, whether you're using cover price, GPA, go collect, whatever, all of that data is based on slabs. Mm -hmm. And what happened during the boom, during COVID, is that slabs took off at such a rate with investors, with new money into the market, that the disparity between the raw books going up and the slabs books going up at a much higher rate right. caused the slab market to get way inflated. So what's happening right now is slabs are correcting and it's making everybody look at these charts with downward arrows and they're thinking- I'm, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> no, I get it, I, I understand why. And it gives everybody the impression, oh my God, the comic market is, is crashing. Right. It is not the case with raw books. Mm. Raw books are, you know, they're doing the same kind of, you know, lateral up and downs, but they're still going up. Right. The fact that they're just basically coming together because the disparity between the raw book and the slab book is just way too high. Right. We're looking at slab books that are going for, you know, especially in the modern market, there are slabs that are going for in nine eights, you know, five to 10 X what they're going for is a raw mint, but right. it makes no sense. Right, right. And so that is my feeling about it. I've seen massive downturns in the values of my slab books, but my raw books continue are, are either, you know, lateral or going up. Right, and yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, it definitely, like the the whole push to CGC, obviously they were backed up for quite a time. So you right. know you had the massive influx and then now you're getting all this in inventory back and that just makes a lot of sense. Um, we were talking about a little bit off camera, You've been doing this for 30 years, almost. A little over, yeah. Little, almost yeah, 30 since years. Since I was 13. Yeah, yeah. so I, I like to kind of ask people, you know, about 2008, obviously that was kind of like a last big, sort of big recession thing. We had the housing market crash and all that stuff. Right. 
Do you have any recollection of that time, or even you mentioned the 90s, and like, do you feel like we can look at those times and get a sense of what's to come in 2023, or what's your, what's your thought of how the comics were affected by those markets? I believe, okay, there are a lot of similarities. I, I'm seeing the early stages now of what happened in 94 and what happened in 2008, but I think that this will recover much faster. Interesting, okay. okay. There's a lot of new money in the hobby. A lot of people are looking to diversify their assets and people are getting panicked about crypto for obvious reasons. Right. And so people are looking for alternative assets. Um, you know, the sports card market is skyrocketing. Comics, despite the fact that you're looking at charts and you're seeing things go like that, every week books are setting new records That's constantly. Yeah. So it's all about investing in the right books. The people that are buying, the people that bought in 94 and bought in 2008, the right books did very, very well. So right. if people are patient, and they invest in not a book that had, you know, a hundred thousand print run last year that are all gonna come back nine eights in three months. Right. And they invest in books that have always check your census, find books that have low census counts, get books that are not, you know, that they can't just make a foil cover of next month. Right. So in case you can't tell I'm not big into modern books. <laughs> right. But <laughs> it is it is a perfect buying opportunity if you have funds available and it's and you and whether you're a collector or an investor yeah you know now is the time to try to pick up that grail raw <laughs> right i would say or you know in a, if you want to get it slabbed or if you find a fantastic deal on a slab you know it, I, I think it's going to continue to go down a little bit for the yeah. next few months but it's going to rebound much faster than it did in 08 and definitely much faster than it did in 94 because 94 it took a decade. Right, right. Yeah, so. 94 didn't have at least pop the pop cultural relevance to Correct. at least and, shine a spotlight back on the market. Right, and there was no CGC. Yes. So, right. but yeah, and also there was not a constant churning out of media product right. to support the books. So, right. Yeah, exactly. So that's interesting. I mean, so what would you say to that person? Like, let's say I'm, I'm somebody, I, I want that big key book that maybe that blue chip book but I'm, I'm a little apprehensive it's like should I buy it now or is it like is it gonna go down in three months by 10% 20% like how do I get over that hiccup I might have or, you know yeah I mean it's the you know it's the old adage of like scared money doesn't make money kind of thing right you if you are worried about possibly you know paying 10% too much today compared to what you would three months down the road if that book is double in two years, what do you get? So right. it's, it's negligible. Right. I, I think that if you get too greedy and you try to wait too long for it to hit a floor, you might miss out on that floor. Right. You can't predict it. You can't, especially when you're talking about rare books, because a lot of these books, you know, if it's a, if you're talking about a Grail book. Now, if your Grail is a Hulk 181 or an ASM 300, there's inventory of plenty. Like yeah. there's no rush to pick up that book. Hop right. on eBay any day, you're gonna find 300 copies available of each. Right. But if you're talking about a rare book, pull the trigger now. Because right. yes, it may go down five or 10% over the next couple of months. I think a year from now, the, the book is gonna be substantially higher than it is today. Right, right. Yeah. Well, James, you know, thank you so much for your insight. My and, pleasure. Uh, hope you have a great rest of the show. All right, well, I'm back with Nico from the Blue Chip Comic. Nico, uh, good to see you again. Likewise, bro. Yeah. It's always a pleasure, man. Yeah, absolutely. So, Last time we spoke, we were at San Diego Comic Con. Yep. Uh, kind of talked about you know how you're feeling about the market and everything like that. Here we are sure. at LA Comic Con. You know, definitely, I would say market has had a little bit more, even more of a pullback, even from that time. Yeah. What's your general feeling right now, as someone who's you know a big dealer, you got a lot of big books? Just what's your feeling on the state of the market, where we're at? You know, I remember first getting involved in the in the um, business side of this. You know, obviously, it's an incredible hobby. We love it so much. I mean, it transcends through multiple countries, multiple variables, and just it's just an amazing hobby to be a part of. In fact, I couldn't think of a better hobby to be a part of to bring parents and kids together, the generations to come. So I, I love the hobby as a hobby, but as a business side, you know, I also realized that, you know, at some point a collectible goes from collectible to an investment. And, you know, I, I first began thinking, you know what, there's gonna be ups and downs in every market. Why not pull, you know, some of my items that may have gone down in price hold those if I, if I don't have an equitable position hold those for a while and buy as much as I possibly can so right. I'm excited about acquiring right you know I'm walking around here looking to buy boots in fact one of my buddies I brought into the space you know him and I were talking about you know buying a booth and we we're talking about which one of us is gonna get this you know buy the dealer out right, because right. I think it's an incredible time to buy it's not a great time to sell and unfortunately most people um, get emotional and they make that emotional decision and that emotional decision fuels other worse emotional decisions. Right, right. And so if they can just say, hey, look, 
I'm willing to hold anything that doesn't have an equitable um, uh, position and I'm just gonna sell the things that do have an equitable position and then just go buy them back at a lower price right, later right. if the market goes down. Right. If the market goes down, buy it back again yeah. at a lower price. Yeah, well that's one of the things I think about a lot is like, you know, because I'm obviously I'm not going 100% all in, but yeah. I'm buying when I see opportunities. And the thought to me is like, okay, well, worst case scenario, if it keeps going down, then maybe I'll buy an A15, you know what that's I mean? Right. So yeah. so that's kind of my perspective. Going into 2023, what, what's your feeling as someone, I know you mentioned buying up stuff, but are you kind of like still in a sort of wait and see, feel it out? Or are you feeling like, if I see a good deal in front of me, I'm just gonna do it? Every, almost every deal that's walked into my booth, I've taken. Okay. Every deal, and you know, and we, we even put, we pay the most for comics in the back of our t-shirts. Right. The reason being is because we absolutely are looking to buy. We're not right. saying it as part of like, we're supporting the hobby, we're supporting, no, we genuinely mean we want to buy, and the reason we want to buy is because we know that this is the greatest time to buy. Just like in any industry, any space, right? It's, it's uh, you know, there's times to buy and there's times to sell, right? This is definitely a time to buy. Right, yeah. yeah. And, if, and uh, you know, if you believe that markets will recover, then I assume that, yeah, that logic holds up. Right? Yeah, it's like, absolutely. It, this is the time to buy. I mean, well, you think about it. What, 81, 85 year track record? I mean, yeah. we're talking four scores. I mean, the only time I've heard four scores is from Abraham Lincoln. Right. So we're, right. we're talking longevity, credibility, Marvel invested, um, I'm sorry, Disney invested 73 billion in Marvel, I believe it was, right. if I'm not mistaken. And they didn't do that to just, you know, have that intellectual property and put it on the shelf. They did that because they want to take, Goofy ain't doing it anymore, right? Right. You know, right. Daffy Duck ain't doing it anymore. So they got to take it to the next level and multiple generations to come. So I feel that they're going to, they're obviously going to have some enhancements inside, you know, Disney Marvel. But also, you know, that intellectual property is going to be here for many, 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 many more scores to come. Right. All right, let me ask this as a hypothetical. Asking for a friend here. What if you're somebody who went like super ham in 2021? Super ham. You, yeah. you bought 100 Eternal One 9.8s. Mm. What, what, what would you do if you were in that situation? Like, are you thinking like, hey, maybe I'll, you know what, cut my losses and deploy that to other books I I'm, believe more in? Or you think that a lot of stuff can recover to those levels? What do you feel? That's a great question. So, I truly believe that Eternals 1, 9.8, at one point was a $3 book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just like Superman 1 was a 10 cent book. You're right. So, there's, there's no data in the history of any major key where they're making a movie or anything where it's going to go down to a point of like non-existence. Right. I've never seen it. Right. I'm a right. data guy, right? right. I, I might not read well, but I can count like Eternals a one could be the first, but at least not yet. Right. And at we least not here. I bought two yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I bought two yesterday. I bought actually one at a, at a previous show yeah, too. I, but, I, I picked it up and I sold it. I sold one of the two I, right. I bought. So it's, uh, to me, I feel very confident that I don't believe that it's going to be a zero book, right? right? I believe that they could have another movie. They could have characters from, you know, that run in other movies, and th those are going to create, you know, you know, the little bubbles and some little, demand. Yeah, it's yeah. going to create a, a little spike in price, and and also at the same time, I mean, if there was millions of those books out there, like millions and nine eight or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands, that's it's a different story. When you look at, you know, the one eighty one. I mean, there's. Right. There's a lot of them, but there's a lot of them. But there's a lot of demand. And they also hit six figures recently. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, yeah, it right? Crazy, that guy, yeah. that I cannot understand how that book hit six figures. But that also goes to support the fact that anything where there's kids watching it now, those kids are gonna get older. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kids are gonna get older. They're gonna become more mature, and they're gonna look to buy or you know things that they got excited about. Yeah. The things that parents watch with the kids, they're gonna buy it later, and you know. So it's. I don't think you're. I mean, if you don't have an equitable position, don't sell. But if you do. You know, you can cash out, and you can literally, what's up, brother? You can cash out, and you can literally go into, you know, a more, uh, how should I say, blue chip key. And right. that's really what, right. what we did to secure ourselves. Our position is secure because we have so many blue chip keys, but we'll also buy lots of collections. So we're not, um, by any means, scared of the correction. In fact, it's healthy. If it weren't a correction, then we would really have trouble on our hands in the future. Right, right. So right. Um, it's great that there's a correction. I don't want there to ever be a correction. Like no one wants there to be a correction, but right. it's a healthy correction, and it's something that's necessary for every industry to make sure that it's not really a bubble legitimately. So. Right, right. Well, you heard it from Nico here. 2023 accumulation phase, right? 
just Absolutely. find the, find the deals you can. Uh, Nico, you know, always great to see you. Thanks so much for Likewise, man. taking the time. Likewise, yeah. always. Hey guys, just want you to know, by far, and I'm not saying this because he, he would never want me to say this, but I'm telling you, greatest content out there. I don't listen to any content anywhere, but I not only listen to this, not only listen to Swagger House, but I also save the links, put them in my notes section of my iPhone to watch them so I'm not interrupted by the kids, right, or anything else. So. Great stuff. I All love right. the fact well, that you do it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll see you next time. Now, as far as the market goes, it's, it's still very strong. Um, over the years, we've had kind of ups and downs with a lot of shooting stars you know people come right. along with money and hype things and variants and all that great stuff but my business hasn't fallen off i mean, i still you know uh, same customers spend a lot of money they they you know comic book collectors weather the storm I of see. recessions and stuff like that like i've talked about before um, they want to fill their lists before they die right, right, right. <laughs> everybody has a list everybody wants to collect everything um and what's really fantastic in the last couple of years is the youngsters. Mm. There are a lot more kids. Uh, 20 years ago, no, it wasn't a kid's hobby. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, I hate to say that, but I've got some very knowledgeable youngsters that come into my shop, and they're quick to say they don't like new comics. They're buying stuff that's 40 years old. Interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this. I mean, so we've seen, you know, that explosion in 2021, even early 2022. Yeah. There's been some pullbacks, especially in this last couple months or so. Have you kind of seen these kind of ebbs and flows in comic books? Does it worry you? What What, what is your feeling it, going it, into 2023? It never worries me because I recognize them. I have these, as I say, shooting stars, you know, in my shop looking for variants, looking for some key in a dollar bin, and right. they're, they're, they're short term. Right. Okay. I, I, I want to say I've seen people, you know, in their 20s that they're all about comics, and five years later they're gone. They're, you know, right. met a girl. Right. <laughs> that happens a lot. That happens. That happens, that happens a happens. lot. I can tell you lots of lots of customers I haven't seen anymore because I met a girl. Right. <laughs> That's always cool. Um, but going forward, yes, the market is getting you know heating up. I still see the back issue market being stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm. New comics, I don't know much about, but from what I've heard, they got to get it together. But as far as going forward, I see the market getting better and better. More and more people are getting into comics. And it's not just because of the movies, right? You know, it's these are long-lasting characters that people identify. I mean, cosplay has never died down, right? Cosplay just gets more elaborate than you could imagine. That's something I've noticed. Mm. You know, and look at how many youngsters are here. You know, I mean, this is great. You yeah. Know, a show ten years ago, uh, -uh. right? You know, right. if they were, it was some screaming kid in a stroller. Right. 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 Yeah. So that's what's really great. So there is gonna be another generation. You know, I could tell you back in the late 90s, me and some of, you know, my uh, long-term collector friends as well as store owners thought we were dying. Mm. We thought comics were dying. Now, you got to remember, Spider-Man came out, first Spider-Man came out, what, 2002? Yeah, around that. Didn't do much for comics. Three, two years earlier, X-Men came out, didn't do anything for comics. Interesting. You know, it wasn't like all of a sudden we had these new people. Now, 2008, as you know, Iron Man, we already had the Hulk, but Iron Man really popped right. the cork for, for, which, for sh comics. Which is yeah. interesting because you have this cross section of housing crisis hitting Absolutely. the market, but then you have Iron Man come out. So, Absolutely. what was your recollection? My, my, my of that? take on that is, is as I weathered the storm. I remember when w I was waiting in line to buy gas in the 70s. And I was still buying comics. Right. Right. Okay. Um, I might, leave, you know, I might eat one less burger and buy two more comics. You know. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. so comics do come first for a lot of people, a lot of right. collectors. It's a lifelong thing. It's very unique. The ones that have gone crazy are always the first appearances. So they're right. always going to be up there. What happens is this is a, a something to learn is. Other than the first appearance, you can collect the other stuff, but that other stuff goes up, you know, um, trends upward price-wise because of movies and stuff. Yes. Once the movies are out, it drops back down. Right. So avoid getting their 10th to their 50th appearance. Right, right. If you're going to pull your money and buy that first appearance, you cannot go wrong. Right, right. You know, I look at like an AF-15 I looked at 
you know, 15 years ago for 15 grand is now, you know, 200,000. Right. You know, but how many AF-15s are out there? But yeah, and, and like I said, any 12 cent Marvel or DC is now in high demand and it's, and it's, and it's moving into the early bronze, the 20 cent comics. Right. All right, well, I am with the legend, Harley Yee from Harley Yee's Rare Comics. What's your kind of general sense of like where prices are in the market and comics and what are you feeling right now? Well, luckily there will, there will always be uh, the core collectors that uh, are very passionate and, you know, are readers or you know, reader, investors, and just run collectors. Right. Uh, that'll always prop up the market. There is a little downturn because we, uh, the, the market shot up so quickly. Right. But we're still much higher than, you know, pre-pandemic levels. Right, right. But I always tell people to buy what you like. And, you know, in the long run, it, it's uh, going to appreciate 2008, we had kind of like the housing crisis and things like that. Who knows where it is to come with this current recession, but like, do you have any recollection of what the comic market was like back then, or, or did it affect uh, it much? You or? know, in 2008, uh, you know, CGC had only been around eight or nine, or excuse me, graded comic books. It had right. only been around eight or nine years. So that was it. The dominant, uh, it is, you know, getting to be, you know, the majority of your sales. Right, right. For, you know, but, so, I, it did, did not have the same impact. Mm, gotcha. So, you, do you think maybe it'll have a little bit more now with it, the graded stuff? It, it, it definitely is going to have a little bit more on the graded stuff because, you know, there was record prices. Right. Right. For, you know, in the last, you know, 2001. Couple years, yeah. Especially 2001. And, you know, there was a lot of money coming in from crypto and, you know. Yeah. Uh, baseball card, you know, the card Sports market. Sports card market, Sports yeah, card for sure. came into the market, so. Yeah. So I guess if you're somebody out there who, you know, maybe you bought, maybe you bought the top a little bit and you're feeling that, that maybe you overpay. What would you kind of? What, what advice would you sort of give to them? Just kind of, you know, well, hold, hold and don't sell, or well, what do you think? It just depends. I mean, in reality, if if you, I would try to hold, but if yeah. you need to sell, there's a certain price level that you know someone is going to buy you. But if you know, if you feel you can't sell for something like that, you got to hold on to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Harley, thank you so much for taking Thanks, the time. Mickey. Really, really appreciate no it. No problem. Well, back at it. The man, the myth, the legend. That's right, the man, the myth, right here. The man, swaggle. The myth, the legend, Christian. Get your swaggle from, on. From Elvin's comments. Hey, that's me. How you guys doing? What's up, uh, YouTubers? How you guys doing? Hope you're doing great. Yep. Here with my man, Swaggle. Get your swaggle on. I appreciate it. I you appreciate make, you. you. Christian always hypes me up. So here we are. Okay. LA Comic Con. LA Comic Con. What a 20, show. Wow. 2022. Yep. Um, I've been doing the thing, you know, going around, talking mm -hmm. to all the dealers. Mm -hmm. well, people always like to hear from your guys' perspectives. Awesome. Obviously, I think last couple months, particularly this month, kind of down. A lot of prices pulling back, yeah. things like that. Yeah. What's your... Can, can, I, can I adjust that real quickly? Okay. Can we say some? Some. Can we say some? Some. some. I, I, I think it's, it's similar, if I can draw an analogy. Yeah. Remember when Walking Dead was crazy yeah. like I remember selling like Walking Dead like 37 for like 40 bucks right and like you put it in the box and it was like literally people were like waiting to be put it gobbling it up off the wall and they're just Walking Dead crazy and then when it started to go down a little bit the normal books went down but Walking Dead 19 was still Walking Dead 19 right first Michonne right, right. so that, that that's went down but that's still a book right, right? so right. No, I don't think it, uh, everything has gone down yeah I think that there's been a, if here's where the average of price is, there's been a little bit of here, but you still have, you know, he does all the, the charts and all the yeah, smart, that's yeah, what you yeah, love, yeah. the smart yeah. stuff. There's still spikes. Yeah. There and there's is. still records being set on certain books. So it's it's, it's completely. an overall recreation, but I just don't want to say that everything's down yeah. because that's not true. Now, I do think that there is a price adjustment that some people, dealers or whatever, sellers got used to being able to, and you've talked about it, yeah. buying it and turning Overnight, it around right yeah, away. Yeah. And 
that's going to be more difficult now. Right. Someone like myself, and I hope this comes off the right way, who's been doing this for so long, I, I have them. So I bought them seven years ago. Right. 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 So when it goes up, I'm like, great. When it nuclears out, I'm like, cool. I can go under and still do really, really good. So, but like at my booth, I've had, I've had 10 guys with the list looking for to do runs. But I also have, you know, 40 long boxes of books here of runs, run filler books, right? Right. But we sell a ton off the wall. I will say this, and I'm not the first one to say it, I'm sure. I've sold a ton of DC. The James Gunn effect, friends, mm. is real. This is from me, who's getting real money from real people at the booth. Yeah. I have had a hard to look at swag. I, I can't keep the holes filled on the DC side. Show them. I can't keep the holes filled. I'm 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 pulling them off of the wall. I'm pull, I'm still selling Marvel. Marvel still is ruling. Come on. Yeah. But the James Gunn effect is real, my friends. This is real money, real people buying books. I can't, I put the books up on the wall and they just give up. These are like minor DC keys, big DC keys, of course. The James Gunn effect is real. Yeah. So that that's is, one that thing that I would take away that's take away from this show well, for sure. And, that, and, that's, and that's to your point about not all books, right? Because it's it, not. It, the market it's not. just looks in different ways. Yeah, for sure. So what's your feeling, I guess, kind of going into 2023, like obviously as somebody who is a dealer you also have to buy how are you i, I buy all the time how are you i, I want to buy your comic books i want to buy them <laughs> sell it to him no but, but but so how are you feeling are you are you even being like a little bit more choosy from time to time are you thinking like um no no if it's a good opportunity to buy them you're gonna buy it like, okay what? here here's here's the truth right so I, i'm always buying so out here around here i'm a buyer so when i roll up to people's booths they're usually pretty happy because i'm i want to buy right so i gotta get this thing to come on so here's what I will say is I buy for like next week, I buy for next month, but I also buy for like five years. Right. Again, I've been in the game for so long. So like I have books I'm selling now that I literally bought five, six years ago. Right. Right. I just bought some books from a guy, came to the booth yesterday. I even paid a little bit more than I wanted to because he was a young guy and I wanted to kind of make him feel good a little bit. So I gave him 20 right. bucks more, whatever. But I'm not selling those books for another... They're, right. they're Galactus books, right? right? They're really good Galactus books. Right. So I'm putting them away, and in four years, I'm gonna be ready. It feels like what you're saying is it's like, when you buy something now, you gotta have a little bit of that, like looking down the road plan. Yeah, well, you, you, know? you, you, have, you know, I was talking to a guy yesterday, and he was like, he, he works in the industry, and here's a little thing if you all don't know. The, guys that, work, the guys that work on the, on the movies, they're buying the books. Yeah, so when you do. see a book that sells, and sometimes he'll talk about it, this like seven copies sold of this book. It's because of people making them know. Yeah, I'm just do. telling yeah. you right now. This is this is. I had a guy t today. We're, we're was, in Los Angeles. So you was, know. We're in yeah, LA. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah, saying yeah, like, I work on these and I'm looking for this. Yeah. And I'm like, cool, thanks. So then I got to get something, yeah, right? Because yeah. that's how I got to do it. So, but you do want to be able to if you're if you're in it for and this, I don't think this is a bad way to say it. If you're in it to buy it, then to sell it. Like it's America, you can buy and sell whatever you want to sell. So if the comic books, you're doing that a little bit. Yeah. I do think that the last two years, it's kind of easy right. to do that. Right. Now you need them to have a little bit more of a plan, be aware of cycles. All right, other thing I want to ask. Yes. Know, sometimes people throw out the adage of comic books being recession. Hmm. Maybe we're going into a little bit of recession. What, what is your feeling on that? What if I bought, you know, special Marvel Edition 15 nice book. at the top? What if I you bought, bought out, out the, the top? top? What if I? Well, what, if, how, how, what would you recommend I do? Here, here's what I'm going to say. Can we define terms? Okay. I, I'm a high school teacher, so excuse me. I got to define terms. Yeah. Right yeah. now, I don't teach no math. I'm a history teacher. I'm a storyteller. Yeah. But we still got to define terms. Use vocabulary. Yeah. You. If someone bought it at the current top. Like the 2021 right. April top. Yeah. Which is the current top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when Deadpool was just hitting, and people had Numius 98 on the wall for $50. And there was a slew, a slew of comic book people and dealers that were like, I can't believe this book. Every collection I have has multiple copies of this. This is a $20 book, maybe. Because that was the top in their mind. Now, even though New Mutants 98 hit a big one, has come down, it's come up, it's the current top. So if you right. bought a book at the current top and it's dipped, it's come down, it's went to half price, it's 70% down, whatever it is, right? 
The only thing you can do at that point is I would tell you to hold. Yeah. Now, does that always going to work out? Yeah, not no. every, not every book. Right? Not every book, because listen, nothing. As a history teacher, nothing's recession proof. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is. You know what I mean? Uh, air. That's it. Everything yeah. else fluctuates, right? So that's why information is key. Good relationships are key. Okay. The Hulk, the Hulk three, this one right here. Third print Hulk 377. That's a hard book to get. That book has had so many ceilings. So many where people are like, right. it's, it's a dumb third print. It's just different color. Right. How is that a $50 book? I mean, is that going to be a $500 book raw someday? Yes. It's the same thing with um, ASM 601. The Campbell book, right? That was the same with Catwoman 51. There's all of these books where people are like, it's, it, it's done, it's done, and it's not done. Right. right. Right? But then you look at a book like people saying, I remember when 7-2 um, Eternity was coming out. This is the next thing. It, this is so good. It's 100%. And there were guys that were putting everything into it. Something's Killing the Children was the pinnacle, dude. Right, right. And listen, I have those books. I'm not trying to poo-poo them. I have them. Right. So I wanted to do well. I'm hoping the show comes out. But you have people who are like, this is it, this is it, yeah. this is it. And when you take a long view, there are certain forever books that I call them. Books that will be a book forever. Right. Now, even forever books take a dip. ASM 15 takes a dip. Yeah. yeah. Amazing Fantasy 15 takes a dip. Yeah, yeah. But like, that's a book where if you have the money, invest in it. Batman 1 takes a dip. Detective takes, they all take dips. Yeah. But it's never not going to be the first Spider-Man. But if you bought it at the top and then it drops 10 grand on it, you got to hold it for you just a gotta bit. You got to wait. You got to wait. Yeah. You got to wait for it to come back. Here's my simple question. Mm. Do we think that there are more collectors today than there were pre-pandemic boom? Yes, there's more so then, collectors today so then, than there are. To, there's more collectors tomorrow than there are today. I've had so legit. By, so by sheer volume, floor prices would be a sheer volume of buyers. There, there, there's more buyers. Listen, again, I'm gonna whatever. I don't want to be telling people. I don't yeah. know if I hope I come off right. I don't know. Whatever. When I first started teaching 27 years ago, there was no people didn't know about no comics. I'm in class. I'm like, all right, you know, are you watching this show? No. I'm like, really? How come? Like, I don't like that character. Like, who's your favorite character? They're like, Poison Ivy. I'm like, what? Right. Because before the answers were One Room and Superman, Batman. That's the only answers. Now these kids are like, oh, my favorite character is Punchline. My favorite, I'm just like, right. what? Every day in class, someone has a comic book related paraphernalia. Shirt, belt buckle, backpack. I got kids that read comics on their phone before I start. They've grown up in the culture. Right. That's it, right? And that's the thing. Now, does that translate? What I always say is if 1% of 1% wants the original, right. there's not enough. Right. If 1% of 1% wants the source material, there's not enough. That's true. It's not enough, yeah. right? So I'm going to end with this uh, if you want me to end. Yeah, I, yeah. I got a little more time if you need it. I'll end with this. Buy what you like. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to my man swaggle. Although you should listen to my man swaggle. Don't listen to me. Buy what you like. If you like it, if it moves you, then get it. Thank you so much. Always great hearing from you. Always great hearing your wisdom. And uh, we'll wow. see you, we'll see you hey, at the next show. One last thing. Hey, dads, love your daughters. Love your daughters, dads. She wants you and she needs you. If you got a kid right now and it's a daughter, why don't you, when you don't watch this video, why don't you go love her up real quick? You know what I'm saying? Our daughters need us. Let's go, hashtag girl dads. Let's go. 100%. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. Always great hearing from these comic book dealers, but let me know in the comments what you think about comics in 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.